Thank you very much for that introduction, Amer. So I'm not going to say it's a pleasure to be here because even words can't really describe how fortunate we are to have this great discussion at such a special event. And who better to have this discussion with than one of the most inspirational people I know, a really good friend, and my own PhD thesis advisor, Professor Washington Ocheng. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Marc, uh, for that uh, very kind introduction. Um, I'm delighted to be here on Good Morning, Good Afternoon, wherever you're joining us from around the world. I'm delighted to be here. So let's just kick things off. And I'm going to ask a very simple yet perhaps complex question, which is what makes you Washington? Yeah, let me put it this way. My journey started a few years ago in a little village in, in Kenya. Um, and the turning point was actually when I was about 12 years old. Uh, I used to sit at night next to my mother, uh, observing airplanes that were traveling from Nairobi to somewhere in Switzerland, but also in London. I used to look at the light coming out of the airplanes, and I used to dream of one day being in the airplane. Um, so one day I said this to my mother who was sitting next to me. Uh, I said, I would like to be in one of those airplanes. And she said to me, son, you are not just going to be in the airplane, but you're going to make an airplane one day. So that actually galvanized me to the extent that I ended up in an airplane, but I also ended up making an airplane. Um, so that's how my story kind of started. So the inspiration, inspiration was my mother. That's incredible. I mean, it's not every day that everyone just decides to make an airplane, but tell us more about um, sort of your journey growing up. You know, one of the things that really sort of strikes me when I look at this discussion is, you know, here we are, you're my African PhD supervisor. I'm a visually impaired Lebanese guy. We're both in London and we're both speaking at a Turkish summit. Isn't it kind of crazy sort of this connectivity and, and, and the fact that we're even here. So, so tell us more about your background, your history, and how we ended up here, basically. Yes, I, I am, by, by nature, a very societal person. Um, I derive pleasure, I derive satisfaction from putting smile or a smile in the faces of people. And over the years, I've come to realize that our future is the youth. And empowering the youth is a critical activity that is going to help solve a lot of the problems that we have in the world. So I'm very passionate about empowering our youth. And really, this is my connection with YGA uh, in the sense that the values, the actual values that are required to empower the youth and to have them work collaboratively to benefit from unity and diversity and selflessness, which are the which is the common value of YGA um, is, is fundamental. And that chimes very much with what I've always aspired to do. And this is one of the main reasons I'm here talking to the youth, the future of the world. I would like us to have this idea, this idea of exploiting difference to make a difference. So the situation that you have just described there, Jean-Marc, is an exemplar, is an example of how difference, how this concept of unity and diversity, which by the way is by design. You know, people need to realize, our young people need to realize that there's a reason for diversity. There's a reason for difference. And that reason is a positive one because the human being needs the other human beings with synergistic and complementary traits to be able to solve the world's challenging problems which are long-standing. So my thesis is that to be able to solve our long-standing problems, whether that is a transportation problems, congestion and so on, we need to get together, whether it is governance, ensuring that the globe needs, has the right leadership. Our youth, our young people need to embrace diversity. They need to embrace you know, this difference and they need, they need to reach out to one another and so the YGA, to me, is that far-reaching conduit, cobweb, trying to bring our young people together. 
and I very much, I very much believe in their cause. So I want to take this back to you growing up now and reaching out. I agree, you know, it's, I love that phrase, sort of unity and diversity, accepting our difference. And your story is, is different to ours. I'm, my story is different to, you know, everyone else's. Everyone's story is so unique. I'd like to know about your challenges growing up. Did you ever feel that there was an outlet for you to explore this diversity or to reach out to an organization like BYJ, for instance? You know, what was it like growing up? So, so I grew up in, in, as I said, in a little village. Um, there is also a real fundamental thing, which is actually familial, you know, how the family actually inspires a child to grow up. Uh, part of my, part of our issue was also to do with poverty, uh, growing, in a, in a, growing up in a fairly um, poor neighborhood. And so there was this element that, that, you know, to be able to get out, to be able to have a better life, you needed to find ways of effectively getting yourself to be able to have the self-confidence and the belief to do that. So there would have been, you know, quite a few inspirations along the way, whether they were from teachers, also the actual galvanization of the community that we lived in. So that actually instilled in us, together with aspects of religion, this, this concept of the human race, obviously coming together and being able to solve problems. So some of the traits that I developed were actually forced upon me by the circumstances, which were not very favorable at the time. And so there was an opportunity, obviously, if you wanted to live better, to be able to strive, you know, to do better things. But what I'd like to emphasize really is that the, the chances of actually being able to do something big start very early in, 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 in your life. I call them the formative years of somebody's life. And so the YGA coming in at that level to me is fundamental. Let, let me just say one more thing, that in the world today, we, we, we spend a lot of money trying to rectify the wrongs, right? So young people growing up, later on, not actually delivering. I think that we could spend maybe one-tenth of that if we were to create the opportunities, if we were to mentor and, and create the double-winged approach, the YGA approach, to ensure that our youth potentially maximize fully their very, very considerable capabilities so that every young person has a, a contribution to make to our society. The world would be a much, much better place. So we are investing and the YGA is investing in the future of the world in this way. Indeed. And um, to something you said there, which is you are almost defined by your circumstances. And I find that interesting because sometimes you need something to be taken away for you, for you to really appreciate what you have and for you to almost want to become more tenacious um, at improving yourself or, you know, sort of changing the world, if that makes sense. I mean, we see it, for instance, with Kershat at WeWalk, you know, visual impairment led to the development of the smart cane. Uh, you know, I see it in myself, I guess, which is I almost want to go against the norm of saying, well, hey, look, you're visually impaired, but let's do something with that. And to that me, chimes, yeah. Yeah, to me, to me, your mark, pressure and so on, you guys are inspirational. Um, and, and, and I have a lot, a lot of respect for you. Now, the reason I say that is because uh, for many years, we have a section of our population that effectively have been forgotten, you know? Uh, and so the societal point I was talking about, and I'd like our young people to be able to do this. I mean, inclusive growth, inclusive development, not forgetting any part of society is not just a, a moral obligation, it's a societal obligation. Uh, and that is why when you contacted me to, to work together with you and the YGA in developing the world's first, first fully autonomous navigation system for the visually impaired, I jumped on board um, because, you know, the, the idea, the idea that a visually impaired person can, you know, in terms of mobility, live a quality of life which is fairly close to the sighted, uh, to me, um, is is something that I've always dreamt about. And, and again, the connection with the YGA uh, and with We Walk Limited um, has given us the opportunity to potentially contribute to this real significant endeavor. So again, as I say, you know, it's not just about, um, the YGA is not just about uh, enthusing the, the young, empowering the youth, 
but also showing the way with examples of, of the like of the smart cane on how we can work together, exploiting the positive aspects of diversity and difference, bringing back common sense, which is quite uncommon these days, uh, to be able to do something that benefits humanity. Now, what better thing can one do? Oh, by the way, you know, if I wasn't societal, um, my initial thinking was that I was going to be a, a, a billionaire, in which case <laughs> I would be helping society with uh, money. Now, I didn't quite do that. So I went for the next best option, which was to do research and development, to be able to develop techniques and, and equipment and uh, processes that would benefit our less able members of the society. Mm. And what's your vision uh, with our project? So just to fill everyone into the summit, we are in partnership at WeWalk with Imperial College London and the Royal National Institute of Blind People to actually deliver this truly autonomous indoor navigation system that's going to be compatible with WeWalk. I mean, can you all imagine a world where someone with a visual impairment can leave their house with their cane, navigate outdoors, um, and then as soon as they get to a tube station, a mall, their cane automatically detects that and tells them, hey, we know you're indoors. There's where the help point is. There's where the shop is. That's where the nearest bin is. And by the way, watch out for those stairs over there. You know, that's, that's a dream because it's not just something which we'll be creating for our community, but something which I know will help my own mobility. I mean, it's, it's so exciting to, to be a part of this. So tell me more about this project, Washington, and the innovation which we're going to be putting out here. Yeah, it gets me a little bit emotional sometimes. You know, I remember giving a, a speech uh, somewhere in Africa about this. Uh, and, 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 and you know that in those particular parts of the world, um, this kind of thing is far removed. People are very poor and so on. And so the idea that, you know, the smart cane, the WeWalk smart cane could be available to them fills me with, you know, uh, emotions. But they are emotions of elation. They are emotions of happiness. And, and so, you know, I think the story starts with, with you, Jean-Marc, when you came to see me and we had the discussion that actually led to collaborating with the YGA and we worked to do this. Um, I, think, I think it will be very interesting for young, our young audience, young delegates to think a little bit about what they would like to be known for, what they would like to be remembered for. And as I said, I don't think there's a better calling for a young person to be able to do something that benefits the global community. So I would like you, Jean-Marc, to um, autonomously you know, come to my office, autonomously go back home, um, just like you know, you'd be doing, um, just like I would be doing. And I think you know, to be able to do that, to be able to even begin to think about doing that is fantastic um, from the perspective of making the world a better place. The world is very small, by the way, it's tiny. I, I have traveled east, west, north, south. And as, as COVID-19 has shown us, it's not that really huge you know, place where you know, people are far removed from each other. You know? The disease started where it started and within a few days, it was around the world thanks to you know, mobility. So it's a tiny planet, we have to protect it. And as I say, the custodians are our youth. And, and hence, you know, us being here to try to do our best to empower them to be able to look after the world better. But it is something that I've thought about for many years. And if we can make it happen, that will put a huge smile on my face. And maybe when I go, wherever I go, um, the legacy that we did something like that would live on. So speaking about the Innovate UK project, let's dive into the innovation here. So our baby is the WeWalk smart cane. It's this smart handle which attaches to their standard white cane, which we know and love in the visually impaired community. And what we want to do with this handle is we want to give our visually impaired community better safety, better mobility, and in the end, better independence through navigation, exploration, and additional safety through the ultrasonic sensor. Now, how does that work? And how does the Innovate UK project build on this foundation? So, so thank you very much, uh, Jean-Marc, for that, uh, that uh, question and introduction uh, of, the, of the smart cane. Um, so ba basically what we would like to do is to give um, our visually impaired uh, uh, colleagues and people uh, the freedom to move much, much better than before. 
Uh, and so what we are doing is to um, work with WeWork uh, uh, to develop this uh, fairly sophisticated platform. Now, as you mentioned, we are building on WeWork's smart cane. Now, the approach with the smart cane is very interesting because this is what most VIPs of the visually impaired persons are used to. So we, we decided to keep that considering the human factors and experience aspect of it. That in itself is common sense because I've seen cases before where they de we, people develop different devices, at least in terms of what they look like. So we are keeping the cane that they're used to. And then we are putting some really clever stuff in there. And suffice it to say that we're going to be using both space-based and terrestrial or ground-based technologies that will be able to guide blind people through seamlessly through different environments, including indoors. So we have sensors and we have mathematical models and analytics that are gonna be using space-based and ground-based technologies to be able to, to enable our visually impaired uh, colleagues to move freely in the environment. Now, one interesting aspect of what we are doing is to provide an additional safety and security layer. We call it integrity monitoring. This enables potential situations that would present a hazard for blind people to be detected and for the blind person to be obviously an alert to be raised so that they can change course and avoid potential collision. Now, this is a game changer in, in the sense that there is nothing like this on in the world today that can do this. That's why I say it's the world's first. Uh, and I'm delighted that uh, we are, I'm working with Jean-Marc um, and the WeWork team, inspired the, by the YGA, to deliver a world's first. So an inspiration in itself, based on what we were talking about in terms of diversity and so on. So as I say, it's an example of what difference and diversity, when used positively, is able to bring. And I think the innovation here extends to more than just this scientific approach, but rather how the project team is approaching it. So here we have WeWalk, where we have expertise in developing these assistive technologies. But, you know, Imperial College is a world leader when it comes to PNT, position navigation and timing models. You know, at WeWalk, we can't do that on our own. We need a partner like Imperial College and their expertise and the amazing work which you've done, Washington. Yeah. And then we have the RNIB, which is tying everything together with our users. There's no point in us delivering this hyper-technical system, you know, that's super competent without the consciousness, which is our user group. How are we actually meeting their requirements? Are we actually developing something which is going to be useful? Yes. And so it's it's really is incredible that we have these three project team members each contributing such a hyper specific yet super complementary um, addition to this project. And that's a really really powerful thing. I think if our youth were if our youth were to um, appreciate that, hey, we all just want to get through life. We all just want to help each other. I think we could do some amazing things in this world. And to end off um, this session, Washington, what would you say? Um, to our viewers, be it younger, older, you know, what, what would you say? I think, I think the first thing is that um, we are in it together. Um, we are in it together and we need to be look, look out for each other. And we need to grasp the opportunities like you just described there, Jean-Marc, when they come, because the opportunities may come only the ones, okay? So I would say that, that the globe, and, 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 and when I say the globe, I mean the youth, and, and I'm addressing our youth directly, but also together with our mentors, those who mentor our youth, to believe in them and to provide them with the opportunities to bring them together in embracing unity and diversity. There's a, there's a, a reason, because the world has got very complex problems not a single person can address all of those complexities on their own. So we need the synergistic and complementary skills that we all have to come together, okay? I started off in a village in Kenya. I've worked all over the world. Uh, in fact, some of my work is done from space. So I'm a space engineer also. So it is possible when you have a bit of enthusiasm, you have societal because you want to help your fellow human to grasp those opportunities when they come and those of us obviously who are older and so on it is our responsibility and it's the societal responsibility it's a moral responsibility to ensure that we give our youth 
the space, the talent, the, 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 the support they need, the resources, so that they can grow up to be able to help the world. I would like them to help the world, to change it, because those older ones, I think we're failing to do it. So who else do we look to? The delegates, the youth, and their mentors. So there's a job for them to do. They will do it if they get together. They will do it if they buy into the YGA uh, common value of unity and diversity and developing all rounded double winged individuals who are self confident, you know, have got the capabilities because they do, they are very talented to be able to make our world a better place. So that would be my advice. And thank you very much for having me uh, to be able to share my views with you at this great conference. Thank you very much, Washington. I mean, Again, as I said at the beginning, a pleasure really doesn't describe this. It's it's like talking to a great friend. And I think we need more of that in this world. Thank you thank so much, you. Washington. And thank you for the opportunity to the team at the YJ for sorting and organizing this. It really was an amazing, amazing Thank you very much. Discussion. God, bless. God bless you all. God bless.